Hi. Today I am going to do an episode um, and talk about a strategy or a tool that is very effective in handling stress anxiety. Um, I last episode I did I talked about all different tools um, for handling stress and anxiety and anger and I failed to mention this one. I believe I had it written down, but I overlooked it. And um, I don't know why, because this is one I talk to my clients about frequently. Um, and it is called guided imagery. My name is Jennifer Spring. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in Southeastern Connecticut. And before I forget, forget, please go to my homepage to subscribe and help me reach my goal. By the time we're done with this episode, we won't want to do anything if this actually works for you and this is effective. You're gonna be so relaxed that you're just gonna not wanna go hit the subscribe. So please do that now, thank you. Um, guided imagery is um, a focused practice that involves each of our five senses um, to kind of like stimulate positive healing messages throughout our body and our mind. Um, it's commonly used in a cognitive behavioral therapy, otherwise known as CBT. People often ask me if I do this kind of treatment, CBT, and yes, I do. Um, guided imagery is like a subset of hypnosis. It will, if it's effective for you and it works, it will get you somewhere between the unconscious and conscious space um, and it will bring awareness to that kind of inner experience. When you are there, you should feel very relaxed. Um, it is a place where uh, there's really good health going on. Your blood pressure is lower, your heart rate is lower, your body temperature drops, your cortisol, which is our stress hormone, hormone drops, adrenaline will drop, um, your muscles are relaxed. It creates a ba balanced hormones. It improves oxygen rates um, and it changes brain waves. So it's a very powerful and healthy space to be in as often as you can find time to practice this. So um, what I usually do in a, in a session is just kind of explain how it works. Here, this is going to be fun because I'm actually going to take you through a, a, a guided imagery and um, take you through different types that you can do once you're in this space. And I'll kind of explain as we're going along what I mean by that. So why would you want to do this? Um, well, like I said, it, it's very good for relaxation, relaxation. So if you just want to chill out or just relax, um, this is really powerful, but if you struggle with anxiety or fears um, or panic, this is a really, really effective strategy for you to learn how to do so that you can do, and it could be one of those tools you pull out of that toolbox that I'm trying to um, fill for you. Um, and when should you do it? Um, the most the best time that I tell people to learn how to do this is right before bed. So to put the phone away, to book, put the book away, um, like a good 15 minutes or so before you try to fall asleep, to go into this guided imagery. And if you fall asleep, great. That means it was, it worked well enough. It relaxed you enough to be able to fall asleep. Um, and if it didn't, this is your time that you could spend that 10 to 15 minutes to kind of just practice it. It is a skill. Like if I told you to go play tennis and you've never done that before, you're going to have to practice a lot in order for you to get good at it or in it to be natural um, and for you to form muscle memory so that you can kind of just turn it on. So for some people, this is a real struggle for them and it takes them a lot, a lot, a lot of practice um, because thoughts are constantly popping up in their head when they try to go into this guided imagery and they find it very difficult for those intrusive thoughts to get turned off. If that happens to you, what I recommend to people, again, it's a skill. If you're not good at it the first 10 times, don't give up on it. Keep practicing, especially if you feel like you are making um, improvements. But what I tell people to do or try anyways, when an intrusive thought comes into play, what am I supposed to do tomorrow? What didn't I get to today? What was that noise? What did I just hear? Um, 
oh my, this hurts me or this is aching me or what's going, you know, whatever it is to kind of just imagine what you do to your phone if you don't want to take that phone call. And that's like press the button on the side that it goes to voicemail. Try to just put it to voicemail. You'll, you'll get to those thoughts later and it might be later or it might be a, tomorrow if you happen to fall asleep that night, which is great but you'll get to it. You don't need that right now. Right now you are designated time just for this and you can tell that anxiety. I have an appointment with myself right now. I only need 15 minutes. I'll get to you, anxious thoughts. I'll get to you later, okay? And so that's kind of what I try to, that's what I recommend. Now, if the thoughts creep in throughout this process of guided imagery, again, click the side of the phone, tell it to go away, I'll get to you later, and then just simply go back to where you last left off. Um, if you were imagining, you know, the silver lining of a cloud, go back to that silver lining of the cloud. Or if you were feeling the sand at your fingertips, go back to feeling the sand. And again, you'll understand what I'm talking about as I take you through this ride. Um, so, Practice, for some people, this is gonna be easy for you. I learned how to do this, I think, in in middle school or high school, very early. And I'm a visual person, so this was really easy for me. And uh, I remember I toyed around with some different spots in my head, but I found my place um, uh, one summer in college. I lived on Martha's Vineyard all through college, all my summers of college and my gap year in grad school. And I cleaned houses as one of my many jobs. And the benefit of doing that is you get to go into all these gorgeous homes. And if you know the vineyard, you know most of the homes you cannot see from the road. They're down long dirt roads and off the beaten path. Well, this one road, and I think it's Doris Day's home, was just the view was so spectacular and that became my place that I visualize. Anytime I do a visualization or a guided imagery, that is my space. Um, so, you know, you are going to have to find yours. Um, so what I recommend to people is to think about a place that they have been to, kind of like my place. It just took my breath away and it was just the most magnificent, um, spot that was just made me feel so good. So you need to have an association between whatever spot you, you imagine and an association to it being a good place. It needs to be a happy place, um, a place that you've been before, perhaps a vacation or a childhood favorite spot. Um, but again, there cannot be any association between any kind of trauma or anxiety provoking or anything bad. It has to be a peaceful, happy place. If you've never been to your spot, if you don't know a place that nothing comes to mind, a beach or a lake or the mountains, it could be um, grandma's kitchen. You know, you have an association, you haven't been in her kitchen in 40 years or 10 years or 50 years, who knows, but you remember that place. Every time you walked into that kitchen, it smelled like cookies. And you can, when you imagine it, it brings back that very loving, um, peaceful spot. It could be that, really, it could be anything. It could be magical. I do this with kids sometimes as a strategy, again, for handling anxiety. And they, I just love the things that they come up with. One little girl, um, she picked the clouds as her place. The big, puffy, white, huge clouds. That was gonna be her place that she jumped from cloud to cloud and, and did cartwheels and, and fell into the clouds and collapsed into the clouds and curled into the clouds and then got up and jumped kind of like a jumpy, like a jumpy thing is how I imagine it to be, but also very soft and relaxing. And so it doesn't have to be real. It could be imaginary. It can also just be a photograph or a place you saw in a movie or um, a picture of something that you just, a, a dreamy spot that you would always would love to go to, but maybe you can't afford it, or maybe you just will never get there for some reason. But when you look at this place or imagine this place, there is a sense of very, of calm and relaxing um, and happiness. So um, I'm going to encourage you to pick your place, but for the for the sake of this exercise today, I'm going to pick a spot and walk you through it. It's going to be a beach scene. Most people 
pick the beach, so I'm going to choose that one for you. But when you get good enough to do this on your own, you can do your own scene. And until you get good enough to do on your own, you may have to just play this video over and over again, or there's plenty online. If you just type in guided imagery on YouTube or anywhere, um, there, a lot of the apps nowadays, also the Calm app, there are some apps that um, you probably have to pay for, but they will they have it on their app where they'll, they'll create their own imagery. I know there's one with like in a hot air balloon and another at a beach and, um, and, and they walk you through and you just follow along with them if you're not able to do it on your own. Eventually you will get better at this and be able to do it yourself. Um, so, so do it before you fall asleep um, as a way of just learning the scale and getting better at it. It can be what you do every night now to fall asleep. It could be something you do to fall back asleep after you fall asleep and then wake up in the middle of the night. Instead of thinking, 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 go to your guided imagery as a way of getting back to sleep. It could be something that you do before a game. I work with athletes all the time and teach them how to do this before a match, before a race, um, before a performance, if you are a singer or a dancer or a performer of some sort. If you give speeches, this is something you can do before your speech. Um, it could be something you do before a stressful meeting, um, whether it's in your company or if you're a career person or a student. Um, if it's before a meeting that you have with a teacher or another student, it's something you can do to t before you take a test if you are a student. Um, it's something I did even when I do it all the time. I, I just love this. It's, this works really well for me, but I did it when I was in labor. It prevented me from, you know, how should I say this nicely? When my husband tried to talk to me when I was in labor, it prevented me from like ripping his head off because I was in my happy place. I was in pain, but I was keeping that cortisol low and the adrenaline low and the rage low and the pain low as I could possibly be because I was really in that trance of, or at least trying to be, um, of being in my space that kept me calm and, and peaceful and under control. <laughs> Um, so really you can, you can do it as it meets your life in any, any way. Just don't do it when you're driving. Cause that's not safe. Um, you could do it before you go driving. If driving is a stressful thing for you before you fly, but definitely not while you're driving, not where you're taking the test, but y you catch my drift. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to ask for you to stop this video. You're not gonna be looking at me because I'm gonna have you closing my closing your eyes, but I want you to find a relaxing spot. So go find a chair or the couch or your bed um, that you can get very, very comfortable in. And once you are all set, I don't want you sitting at a desk, I really want you to be comfortable, um, then you can restart the video. Um, so I'll give you a chance to do that now. Okay, so we are back. Hopefully you are in your very comfortable place. So I am going to take you through several different styles of relaxation and visual guided imagery techniques. And I will explain them as I'm going. If they don't pertain to you, um, well, the first one pertains to everybody because it is actually the guided imagery where we are imagining a very pleasant um, imagery. Um, this is just going to teach you how to get to the next levels, but I really want everybody to know how to do this part. Okay, so I'm going to play some music as we go, and I want you to first just close your eyes. There's no need to look at me anymore. And I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose, hold it, and out through your mouth. I'm gonna have you do that again. Take another deep breath in through your nose, hold for four, and out through your mouth. Okay, so I want you to imagine that you are on a beach. and you are the only one there. 
but you are not afraid. You are walking on the sand. It's a large beach. You're heading towards the water. It's warm. You could feel the sand at your feet and the sand is warm. Take a look around at what you see. It's bright, it's beautiful. You're very calm in this place. There is no stress. It is very peaceful. I want you to take a seat on the sand. You might be in a chair or on a towel. It doesn't matter. And you're either sitting or lying back. And I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. We're gonna pay attention to all of our senses. So let's start with what you see. Take a look around, your, your eyesight is perfect, 2020. Look at the different colors of blue in the water. Notice how they change how they merge. You can see very distant in the horizon, see the white caps on the water. Look at the seagulls flying and swaying through the sky, rising and falling. Look at both ends of the beach and see how far it goes. Look at the clouds in the sky. Notice the silver linings. Your vision is that good. There's puffy clouds. There's light clouds. The sky is blue. The sun is bright. Yellow is shining. Look at the sand at your toes or in your hands. Notice the granules of the sand. There's millions of them. There's white and black and brown. They're tiny, tiny, tiny that make up the mounds of the sand at your feet and all along this beach. If there's boats, see the boats. Notice the lining of the sails, the different colors motor boats. Look at the waves that they create and the wake they create behind them as they glide along the water. If you see beach umbrellas, notice the colors. The blue and the green and the yellow and the white. Now smell the salt air. Feel the warmth of the sun on your shoulders, on your face, on your legs. Feel the sand at your fingertips or at your toes, how soft and warm it is. Feel the breeze that's hitting your hair and your face. Now 
What do you hear? Hear the seagulls. Hear the water and the tide coming in and going out. In this place, you are perfect. You are relaxed. You are stress-free. You look amazing. You have the body that you desire and want. Look at your face. You are happy. You are free from whatever ails you. You are healthy. You are perfect. This is your place to come anytime you need to relax or escape or to slow everything down. This is your pleasant imagery. Your blood pressure is lower. Your body temperature is lower. Your heart rate is slower. Your hormones are more balanced. Your cortisol is lower. Your adrenaline is lower. And your muscles are relaxed. I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And as you come down, relax your shoulders. Let your body fall into the earth, into the sand. Heavy, relaxed. I'm going to now take you to a mental reframing and change type of imagery. So I want you to imagine connecting yourself to a gas pump. It just appears. This is fantasy. We could do anything we want here. You know what a gas pump looks like. Imagine connecting your body to some kind of pump that resembles a gas pump. It can go into your arm, it can go into your navel, anywhere, it doesn't matter. We are going to pump things in that you feel like you lack. I want you to pump in confidence. It's entering you. You are being filled. I want you to pump in love. It is entering you. You are being filled. I want you to pump in self-love. It is entering you. You are being filled. I want you to pump in new beginnings, change, strength, healing, self-esteem, and happiness. Now we're going to change the direction of the pump and we are going to remove what you don't want. Pain. It is leaving you. You are free. Depression, it is leaving you. You are free. Anxiety, it is leaving you. You are free. Heartbreak, it is leaving you. You are free. Self-doubt, injury. If you have an athletic mental block, it is leaving you. It, you are free. You could play around with that as and when you want. I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Now we're going to go into a different kind of physiologically focused imagery. Do you have a sickness? Do you have a tumor? Do you have a lump? I want you to imagine white cells fighting that disease, wherever it is. See white cells attacking it. 
And if you don't have a specific place that you know it is, it's just through your body, just imagine that that a tumor or a lump or cancer or diabetes or cholesterol, it is being attacked. It is being defeated. That broken bone, it is being healed. That torn ligament or torn tendon or sore or torn muscle, it is being healed by this white energy, embracing it, engulfing it, destroying it, shrinking it, beating it down, being defeated. You could do that with any kind of sickness, cold, COVID, cancer, anything, any kind of injury, heal yourself. Studies show that doing this heals disease, fights cancers, cures. I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. I'm gonna take you to the last kind of imagery and it's called mental rehearsal. Are you an athlete, a musician, a performer? Someone who gives speeches or presentations, small, large crowds? How about someone about to take a test or do something anxiety provoking, like flying or riding in an elevator or driving, getting married, anything? Take yourself there, wherever there is, to the pitcher's mound, the batter's box, the golf course, the blocks on the track, the stage, the airplane, the classroom. See yourself there. You are perfect. You are confident. You are strong. You are unafraid. You are relaxed. You are solid. Look around. See the green, see the ball field, see the track, see the ski course. See the stage, see the classroom. See things in color, just like at the beach. Pay attention to your senses, hear the sounds, Smell the smells. Feel your surroundings, the air, what's at your feet, what's in your hands. Go back to you, see your face. You are perfect, look in your eyes. They're ready. They're focused, you look great. You're strong, you're ready, you're excited. You've got this. Get ready to go. It's time to go. It's go time. It's time to tee off. It's time to swing. It's time to sprint. It's time to jump. It's time to dive. It's time to shoot. It's time to dance. It's time to sing. It's time to talk. It's time to take that test. See yourself go. You're doing it, do it, swing, hit, run, sing, twirl. You've got it, you have perfect form. Do it again, rewind, do it again. It's just as perfect. Rewind, do it again. See yourself from above carrying it out now, seeing yourself the whole race, the whole dance, the whole test, the whole flight, the whole stroke, running the whole bases. You're seeing yourself from above. You're perfect. 
Your form is incredible. It's the best it's ever been. It's what it should be. It's what you always want it to be. See it over and over again. Look in those eyes. See your face. You're free. You're free of fear. You're free of tension. You're free of anxiety. You're free of your mental block. You've got this. Over and over again, you're moving. It's effortless. You are on point. It's working. It's flowing. This is your place of perfection in your sport or your creative spot or where you need relief from anxiety to be able to perform or do this task. This is a state of deep relaxation. You are somewhere between unconscious and conscious. I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. I'm gonna bring you, start bringing you back. I want you to imagine the room that you're in. What does it look like? What do you hear in your space? What do you smell? What do you feel? Slowly begin to open your eyes and bring yourself back. I hope you were able to do that. It was very peaceful and calming for me to walk you through that space. Again, this is something that you can do in any of these kind of realms that I walked you through. I just did the regular guided imagery, your pleasant imagery. Then I took you to like the mental reframing where I, I took the gas pump, pouring into your body goodness, taking out, pumping out what no longer serves you. I like the visual of a gas pump because it's something to visualize. You can, it can just go in and go out and come in. It could just permeate your skin, however you wanna do that, but that is very effective for removing what you don't want and bringing in what you need more of. Then I did the mental rehearsal of the athlete or the performer or the test taker. See yourself doing that thing from start to finish. I work with a lot of athletes when it comes to this and I'm happy to work with you individually if you need more support in this area. So those were four different kinds of imageries. Um, I used music along with it and as I explained in my last episode, the more tools you use at the same time, even better. So here we had two tools. We had the music, and by the way, that was Weightless, which is a song that I referred to and gave you in my toolbox in my last episode as um, music. Um, so that was the song with the visualization, two tools at once to help you calm and relax. So again, I hope this was effective, something you may need to practice over and over again. You could use this video or anything online um, where you it can kind of walk you through the stages. So that's it. Use anytime. Thank you.